Zach Efron, Lords, Netflix, Monday Musings. If you're a subscriber to Netflix, there is a new series um, that came out recently, which is called Down to Earth with Zach Efron. And if you aren't aware who Zach Efron is, he's a famous actor. He's been in movies um, such as Neighbors, High School Musical, and a whole bunch of other uh, um, movies that he was in. And in this new series, Down to Earth with Zach Efron, uh, basically what he does is he goes all throughout the world to try and get some answers to age-old questions. In episode two, he actually goes to the Sanctuary of Lords because the focus of that episode is on water. And since it's on water, he goes to um, the Shrine of Lords in order to, uh, you know, talk about a little bit about um, the healing uh, waters that are present at the Sanctuary of Lords. So the, um, the uh, episode two begins with Zac Efron. He's with Anna Kendrick, who's another famous actress. And they're in California, and they're basically tasting water from all over the world. And as they're tasting water, they're trying to experience the different um, qualities, I guess, that are present um, in the water, and also the different tastes that can be found, um, you know, in different aspects of uh, drinking water. They go on to provide, because it's on water, they go on to provide just some interesting stuff we're probably aware of um, with water, how we can go three weeks um, without food, we can only go three days without water, how our um, body is composed of over 65% um, of water, and so you get some kind of interesting uh, stuff just about the basic properties of water. Then they go to France and they look at kind of the unique um, I guess water system in France, and basically everyone has uh, free access to purified water all throughout France. They have these drinking fountains um, all throughout France where you can get free purified water. And uh, obviously that was to provide, um, you know, access to everyone for um, water. And also um, another aspect that it helps eliminate is the fact that we use so many, and I think they said something like uh, one million bottles per minute um, of uh, um, plastic water bottles go to waste each year. So, you know, this uh, process that France has um, engaged in has helped eliminate, um, you know, this unnecessary use of plastic water bottles that we have. And also they kind of say, which again, nothing, I wouldn't be aware if this is true or not, um, how 25% of bottled water is nothing more than tap water. Most interesting to me about this whole episode was at the end of the episode, they go to Lourdes, France, and that's the famous apparition site where the Blessed Mother appeared to a young peasant girl named uh, now St. Bernadette. And um, there were many apparitions that happened. Eventually, Mary told uh, Bernadette to dig into the mud and that water would begin to spring forth from there. And so she did that. All the townspeople thought she was crazy because there she was digging in the mud. And eventually, miraculously, water did um, come to spring uh, from that place. And um, because of that, the water actually still continues to flow um, from that source this day. And so Lourdes has always been um, kind of known for the healing um, property of water. And so when Zac Efron is in Lourdes, he meets with the a medical doctor who's um, stationed at Lourdes. And because there's been so many miracles attributed um, to that shrine at Lourdes, uh, he talks with the doctor um, about how uh, actually something can be um, verified as a miracle, which uh, one thing I was not aware of is they say, the medical doctor says how in order in the Catholic Church for something to be verified a miracle, there are seven criteria they must go through. So I thought that was kind of unique. And um, they just give some interesting stats how over the past 135 years, 7,400 claims have been submitted uh, to the Lord's Medical Bureau, and only 70 of those have been substantiated as um, miracles by the Bishop of Lourdes. And the last case um, was in 2018, and over 300 doctors studied a case looking for a medical explanation to what was deemed to be a miracle, and out of 300 doctors, none of them could find a miracle. After meeting with the medical doctor at Lourdes, then uh, Zach Efron, and the other one who's always involved um, going around the world with Zach Efron um, for this series is uh, some health guru. So then they meet with the chaplain of Lourdes, and he takes them around. Um, and this is, you get to experience some of the... Uh, you know, spots at Lourdes, the grotto site where Mary actually appeared, um, where the water still springs from. You can see the church. Um, and you also see one of the, you know, amazing things about Lourdes is they pray the rosary, well, before this pandemic, they pray the rosary at Lourdes every night by candlelight. And so you get some beautiful visuals of the shrine and also that um, nightly uh, rosary candlelight procession. Zach Efron was raised as an agnostic and he was kind of moved by this rosary experience. He doesn't obviously, you know, 
convert to Catholicism or anything like that. Um, but he does say prayer uh, in the movie or in the series. Um, he said prayer means different things to different people. But what I found is that sometimes just taking the time to ask, it can bring peace. It can bring peace. I don't expect everything I pray for to be answered, but sometimes taking the time to ask is comforting in itself. And then he says about the candlelight procession, whether or not you believe in the power of prayer, when you witness thousands of people at a candlelight vigil like this, there's no denying the energy. My thoughts are almost in a pure meditative state, and I feel like I'm part of something much greater than myself. I was happy to watch this because I've been to a number of Marian shrines, um, Guadalupe, Fatima, Medjugorje, um, a whole bunch of other ones. And... Uh, one of my favorite, my favorite has always been um, Lourdes. So I've been there a couple times and it just, uh, you know, brought me somewhat back to uh, being at that beautiful Marian apparition site. And Lourdes is very popular. Um, again, over four to six million people go there a year. And what's probably most unique um, about Lourdes is when Mary appeared to this peasant girl. It was shortly after the dogma of the Immaculate Conception was proclaimed that Mary was conceived without um, sin from the first moment of her conception. And when now St. Bernadette asks Our Lady to um, say who she is, Our Lady says to Bernadette, I am the Immaculate Conception. And that was another way they could tell this was a miracle because there's no way this peasant girl would have been able to, uh, you know, have any sense of what the Immaculate Conception was. So one way to honor the Immaculate Conception is there is the Miraculous Medal. I'll include a link. Um, and basically the prayer of the Miraculous Medal says, Our, O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. So if you have Netflix, you can watch the whole series. Um, and in particular, I'd obviously encourage you to watch episode two, um, which does uh, bring you to Lourdes, which is kind of unique. In the series, I watched a couple of them. You also have uh, Zach Efron and this health guru also go to Iceland, Costa Rica, Sardinia, Lima, Peru, Puerto Rico, London. And again, they're just uh, trying to find um, answers to age-old questions. So just kind of a unique way of how this agnostic, um, because of water, was brought um, to the sanctuary of Lourdes, where Our Lady appeared. So you never know how grace is going to work. And... Uh, um, so just something you might want to uh, consider um, watching when you're in quarantine if you have access to Netflix. See you soon, St. Catharines.